Kathy. What's the matter with good old George? Nothing's the matter with good old George. Something's the matter with stupid old me. <laughs> what are you talking about? I thought you and George were buddy-buddy. Oh, we were getting along fine, Patty. Except that George only seemed to call me when he couldn't get another date. I wanted to make a real impression on him. So, I, I wrote to the Lovelorn column Mr. Narsco paper asking his advice. Have you ever read that column, Simon Says? I've heard of it. Well, Simon advised me to make a date with George and stand him up. He said, give him the shock treatment. I did. Now George won't even speak to me. <laughs> Gee, Kath, I'm sorry. Oh, you're not nearly as sorry as Simon is going to be when I get hold of him. <laughs> Hello, Simon. Here's your mail. It's been piling up. <laughs> Meet Kathy, who's lived most everywhere, from Zanzibar to Barclay Square. But Patty's only seen the sights the girl can see from Brooklyn Heights. What a crazy pair. But they're cousins, identical cousins all the way. Matching bookends, different as night and day. Where Kathy adores a minuet, the ballet Russe and crepe Suzette. Our Patty loves to rock and roll, a hot dog makes her lose control. What a wild duet! Still they're cousins, identical cousins, and you find they laugh alike, they walk alike, at times they even talk alike. You can lose your mind when cousins are two of a kind. You haven't touched your breakfast, Kathy. I'm really not very hungry, Aunt Natalie. Is anything wrong? Nothing I won't get over. Would it help to talk about it? Some things are better left undiscussed. I don't mind talking about it. I just made a fool of myself. Oh, look, Kath, you don't have to tell them about it if you don't want to. I'd probably feel better if I discussed it. I could kill him. Kill who? There's a new advice to the Lovelorn columnist on our school paper. He gave me some silly advice and I took it. Now George won't even talk to me. Oh, well, it's too bad. Who writes the column? Nobody knows. I've heard all kinds of rumors. It's supposed to be a teacher, a senior, a professional newspaper man. I hear he works miracles. Maybe he just didn't follow his advice properly. He told me to stand George up, and I stood him up. Well, that doesn't sound like very good advice to me. What's his full name? Simple Simon? <laughs> oh, look, there are ways and ways to stand a boy up. He should have done it without hurting George's feelings. It was a good maneuver. You just didn't execute it right. Do you really think that's it? I know it is. You used the iron fist, but you forgot the velvet glove. <laughs> Perhaps you're right. Why didn't I go to you for advice? Huh? <laughs> yeah, what do I know? <laughs> you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to write to Simon again and ask for more details. After all, he's a man. He should know how to handle men. <laughs> no doubt about it. I'll write him this afternoon. <laughs> Cuz? Yes? Sign it. Dissatisfied customer. <laughs> oh, if you feel like it. Dear dissatisfied customer, if your boyfriend has stopped talking to you, it's a very healthy sign. You've got him all stirred up. Simon says to let him see you out with another boy, and he'll come to his senses. From then on, he'll be eating out of your hand. That doesn't sound right to me. Sounds great to me. It's the old jealousy bit. It never fails. But George is very honest. I don't have to play games with him. Kathy, 
I think Simon knows a lot more about men than you do. <laughs> I suppose you're right. I'll give it a try. You won't be sorry. Where's Kathy? She's in her room, crying. <laughs> crying? What happened? She had a fight with George last night. About what? Well, Kathy went to the shake shop with Harold, and George saw them there, and... And? And instead of getting jealous like he was supposed to, he told Kathy he was glad she had someone to take her out, and he decided to go steady with Audrey. I don't understand it. Kathy was so fond of George. Why did she go out with someone else? I think it was something she read. Simon says strikes again. Uh, excuse me, I think I'll go check and see how Kathy is. He's not worth it, Kath. He didn't even know enough to get jealous. Who needs him? I do. Patty, I want you to do something for me. <laughs> sure, anything. You just name it. Find out who Simon Says is. I'm going to tear him limb from limb. <laughs> triple sweetheart flip, one double deck of delight, one rainbow nightmare, and one chocolate soda. Are you sure you won't have any dessert? No, not right now, Sammy. Thanks. Listen to this. Dear Simon Says, my steady boyfriend went out with another girl and I found out about it. What should I do? It's signed, three's a crowd. And here's his answer. Dear three's a crowd, don't be a clinging vine. Tell your boyfriend it's all right. When he finds out what a good sport you are, he'll come running back to you. Good advice. Good advice? I'm three's a crowd. <laughs> I haven't seen Howard since I told him he could go out with anyone he liked. I had a small fight with Alfred last week, and after following Simon's advice, it's turned into World War III. Listen, who is the Simon Says character? We've got to get him. He's ruining my life. Mine too. <laughs> The rumor is he's a famous B&E psychologist. That's what I heard. Me too. Yeah. I wonder who started that rumor. Yeah, I wonder. Come to think of it, I think I first heard it from you. You did? Yeah, so did I. Well, then, if you heard it from me, there must be something to it. <laughs> Look at all this mail. All that for me? Your column has really caught on, Patty. It gets ten times as much mail as all the other columns combined. Hey, that's great, isn't it? Tell me, are, are most of the reactions pretty favorable? Well, no one's a hundred percent right. You must be hitting a thousand. Uh, yeah, speaking of hitting. I want you to promise me you'll never tell anybody who Simon is. But why? I think you'd want everybody to know you're writing such a hot column, Patty. Uh, I wouldn't want a whole bunch of kids fawning over me. Hmm. Will you promise? If you say so. Simon says so. <laughs> Listen to this. Dear Simon Says, I am a teenager. I've been going with one girl and she's a dog but she's possessive and jealous. Please advise me. Signed, Stuck. He's stuck, all right. <laughs> Dear. We want Simon Says. Uh, what do you want him for? Just tell us who he is. We'll take care of the rest. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, Kathy, but we're not allowed to give out that information. How many men work on the staff of the Bugle? 
Oh, I, I don't think he's a regular staff member. Uh, at least, I've never seen him. Pete, I want to know where to get in touch with him. So do I. Where is he? For gosh sakes, will you take it easy? Take it easy? We're being destroyed by this maniac. Oh? Uh, uh I tell you what, I'll, I'll have a heart-to-heart -heart talk with him. Well, you'd better do it fast. My boyfriend Alfred wrote in asking him how much money Simon thought he should be making before he got married. Simon advised him to join the Merchant Marine. And he did. That was Alfred? What was Alfred? I mean, that's Alfred. Oh, he's running off somewhere. Well, he wouldn't have run off if it hadn't been for Simon Says. We want him. Calm down. I'll report your complaints and get back to you. You'd better. If you don't do something about it, we will. Let's go. <laughs> I'm working on it. How does it look? I think he's an English brain surgeon. English surgeon? I'll let you know when I find out something more definite. I knew I could count on you. Well, congratulations on your happy fan club. <laughs> Can't win them all. Excuse my barging in like this, but I didn't have anything to do tonight now that I'm not seeing Howard and I got kind of lonely. I thought we might watch television. Sure, why not? Come on in. I guess a lot of girls at school are having the same problem. With everybody fighting with their boyfriends, there's not much to do evenings. <laughs> Welcome to the club. Hello, Sue Ellen. Well, hi, Kathy. So, he got you too, hmm? Yes. I was just shot down in flames. We've got to do something about Simon. Ever since he started writing his column, every one of us has broken up with her boyfriend. If we don't get him, we're all going to turn into old maids. Well, you don't have to take his advice, you know. It doesn't matter whether we do or not. Our boyfriends are taking it. Looks like you're the only one not having any trouble. <laughs> you know, good old easygoing Richard. Excuse me. Hello? Hi, Tommy. Tommy? Oh, no, I'm, I'm afraid I can't. Why don't you call Alice? Oh, you don't. Well, I'm sure everything will work out. Yeah. Okay. Bye, Tommy. Sorry, Alice. The nerve of him, calling to ask you for a date. Well, he said since he's not seeing you anymore... Excuse me. Hello? Oh. Hi, Alfred. Alfred? No, I, I can't. I'm busy tonight, Alfred. Why didn't you call Maggie? She is not. She's a great girl. I'll see you in school tomorrow, Alfred. Bye. Boy, what did you do to him? He's sure mad at you. I followed Simon's advice. He did? What name did you write to Simon under? Troubled Spirit. Why? Oh, just curious. Excuse me. Hi, Patty. I'm sorry. I'm afraid I won't be able to go with you tonight. Well, that isn't why I came over. Oh, it isn't? No, I came over to tell you that I've decided it would be better if I started going out with different girls. <laughs> what? Yeah, I've been thinking it over, and oh, I'm too young to be a martyr. <laughs> what did you say? Oh, I've, I've got my own life to think about. I've decided to go out and join the human race. I don't want to get stuck. <laughs> Stop! Stop! What? I mean, uh, somebody must have told you that. Don't listen to her. Him. Them. Well, I'm sorry, Patty. I've had advice from a wise old v &E psychologist. And I'd be foolish to ignore it. A wise old v &E psychologist. Or an English 
brain surgeon. I don't know which. Uh, but it doesn't matter. It's good advice. I'll see you when I have time, Patty. Bye. Uh, Richard, you... We've got to put a stop to Simon Says. Oh, Says. <laughs> Say. And I think I know just how to do it. You do? I'm going to set a trap for him. What kind of trap? <laughs> we don't know who Simon is. It could be any one of our boyfriends. That's right. Oh, what kind of trap? <laughs> or it could even be one of our teachers. Sure. Uh, what kind of trap? Or perhaps it really is the B&E psychologist who's gone mad. What about the trap? Or it could be someone from another school. Right. So, since we have absolutely no idea who Simon is, I think it would be better if I didn't discuss my plan with anyone. Well, you can trust me. Of course I can trust you. But I have to set this up myself, Patty. Can't you tell us anything about the trap? I can tell you one thing. Yeah? It can't miss. Hi, Pete. Hi, Simon. Shh. Ooh, ooh. What's the matter? We're alone. I don't care. Never say it. Not even to yourself. Oh, if word ever gets out, limb from limb. You love long columnists. Sure living an exciting life. There's a telegram for you. I'm going up to see the principal. The principal? What for? I don't know. He just said he wanted to see me. That's it. That's what? The trap. <laughs> so, they went to him to force you to tell on me. What are you talking about? The freedom of the press. He can't force you to tell. Patty, who says he's going to try? I say so. Pete, you promised. Nobody's to know I'm Simon. I don't care how he threatens you. I want you to stand on your principles as a newspaper editor. Mr. Brewster wouldn't threaten me. That's the spirit. He'll back me up? You bet I will. Thanks, Pete. I knew I could count on you. So that was the trap that couldn't miss. <laughs> He? It's from the Pan Ocean Press Service. They want to syndicate Simon Says. They do? Yeah. Imagine. Me syndicated. <laughs> I'll be famous all over the world. In Paris, Simon D. In Madrid, Simon D. In Italy, Simon D. In Moscow, Simon Govorit. <laughs> Hello. Who? It's the overseas operator. They're asking if there's anybody here by the name of Simon Says. The overseas operator? That's it. It's the Palace and Press Service. They'll want me. What'll I do? Take the call. I can't. They're probably expecting a Viennese psychologist or an English brain surgeon. They must be interested in the column or they wouldn't be calling. It doesn't matter who you are. You're right. <laughs> I'll be back as soon as I can. And don't worry, I won't crack. Thanks, Pete. Hello? <laughs> yes? Yes, it's Simon Says. I cannot hear you, operator. Could you speak a, a little louder? We got him. <laughs> It's London calling. Are you still there? I am here, operator. Who is calling? <laughs> it's the Pan Ocean Press Service calling. <laughs> Mr. Blotchett. Do you hold on, won't you? He's ready. Take over. <laughs> Hello. Uh, Hugh Blotchett here in London. <clears throat> Simon says here in America. <laughs> Would I be interested in worldwide syndication? You're right. He, he sounds Viennese. Keep him talking. Let's go get him. 
Oh, I'm so sorry I couldn't find Patty. Oh, yes, she'll be sick missing all the fun. <laughs> when can we meet to discuss this, old chap? Uh, I do not think we will be able to meet. I have a very busy schedule. May I suggest you just uh, send me a contract? No, uh, I could not fly to London. My schedule would not permit it. Well, perhaps I could fly there? Uh, no, I do not think that would be a good idea. It would be much better to do the business by mail. Your three minutes are up. Five cents, please, for the next five minutes. <laughs> Hello. Are oh, you still there, old chef? Hello. Hello. Who? Simon Says. Was a man in here just using a phone? Was that Simon Says? Oh, he just ran out of here. Oh, oh what did he look like? Well, he was, he was about six feet four, gray bushy <laughs> hair, and a monocle. He looked beneath. Oh, he slipped by us. It's all right, Simon. Mr. Brewster didn't even ask me about your identity. <laughs> he just wanted to talk about the anniversary issue. <laughs> I think I really... Look, it was all in fun. I was only trying to help you. Where's your sense of humor? Simon says, help! Hello? Howard? This is Patty Lane. Yeah. Uh, Howard... I know about the fight you and Sue Ellen had. You see, really, it was all my fault. How? Go on, tell him. Uh, uh, Howard, you want to laugh? <laughs> I'm Simon Says. <laughs> Not anymore, you know. <laughs> Hey, uh, business seems to be off tonight. Where are all the crowds? Back with their boyfriends where they belong. Oh, I see. I understand you're not in the columnist game anymore. That's right. I've been demoted to selling want ads. They have a new Simon Says. Who is it this time? I hear it's one of the teachers. Well, you'll have to go some to replace you. <laughs> I know how to handle boys. I guess I'm just no good at advising others. Where's Richard? Oh, him? I guess I advised myself out of Richard, too. I wrote to the new Simon Says about it. You know what he said? Stay home and forget it. I'm leaving now. You have a day with George tonight, huh? Yes. Any advice? No. I'm glad everything straightened out between you two. Funny you being the one to catch me. Someone had to do it. That must be George. <clears throat> Patty, I know you meant well. Oh, I always mean well, Papa. <laughs> Just never turns out right. Well, there's one good rule to learn. Before you give expert advice, be sure you're an expert. <laughs> I remember it. Although I doubt if I'll ever have any chance to use it again. Well, hi, Richard. Hi. Hi, Richard. Hi. What are you doing here? Simon Says said you'd be miserable without me. <laughs> Simon Says said that? That's right. I did. Hi. Here's Kathy, who's lived most everywhere, from Zanzibar to Barclay Square. But Patty's only seen the sights a girl can see from Brooklyn Heights. What a 
crazy pair. But they're cousins, identical cousins, and you'll find they laugh alike, they walk alike, at times they even talk alike. You can lose your mind when cousins are two of a kind. Up with Harold, and George saw them there, and and. And instead of getting jealous like he was supposed to, he told Kathy he was glad she had someone to take her out, and he decided to go steady with Audrey. I don't understand it. Kathy was so fond of George. Why did she go out with someone else? I think it was something she read. Simon says strikes again. Uh, excuse me, I think I'll go check and see how Kathy is. He's not worth it, Kath. He didn't even know enough to get jealous. Who needs him? I do. Patty, I, I want you to do something for me. <laughs> sure, anything. You just name it. Find out who Simon Says is. I'm going to tear him limb from limb. <laughs> triple sweetheart flip, one double deck of delight, one rainbow nightmare, and one chocolate soda. Are you sure you won't have any dessert? No, not right now, Sammy. Thanks. Listen to this. Dear Sammy, I'm sorry I didn't tell you about this. My steady boyfriend went out with another girl, and I found out about it. What should I do? It's signed, Three's a Crowd. And here's his answer. Dear Three's a Crowd, don't be a clinging vine. Tell your boyfriend it's all right. When he finds out what a good sport you are, he'll come running back to you. Good advice. Good advice? I'm feelings. It was a good maneuver. You just didn't execute it right. Do you really think that's it? I know it is. You use the iron fist, but you forgot the velvet glove. Perhaps you're right. Why didn't I go to you for advice? Huh? Yeah, what do I know? You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to write to Simon again and ask for more details. After all, he's a man. He should know how to handle men. No doubt about it. I'll write him this afternoon. Cuz? Yes. Sign it. Dissatisfied customer. <laughs> oh, if you feel like it. Dear dissatisfied customer, if your boyfriend has stopped talking to you, it's a very healthy sign. You've got him all stirred up. Simon says to let him see you out with another boy and he'll come to his senses. From then on, he'll be eating out of your hand. That doesn't sound right to me. Sounds great to me. It's the old jealousy bit. It never fails. But George is very honest. I don't have to play games with him. Kathy, I think Simon knows a lot more about men than you do. <laughs> I suppose you're right. I'll give it a try. You won't be sorry. Where's Kathy? She's in her room, crying. <laughs> crying? What happened? She had a fight with George last night. About what? Well, Kathy went to the shake shop. Three's a crowd! <laughs> I haven't seen Howard since I told him he could go out with anyone he liked. I had a small fight with Alfred last week. And after following Simon's advice, it's turned into World War III. Listen, who is the Simon Says character? We've got to get him. He's ruining my life. Mine, too. <laughs> the rumor is he's a famous b &E psychologist. That's what I heard. Me, too. Yeah. I wonder who started that rumor. Yeah, I wonder. Come to think of it, I think I first heard it from you. You did? Yeah, so did I. 
Well, then, if you heard it from me, there must be something to it. You're late. Ooh. Oh. I uh, got held up by my fan club. Look at all this mail. All that for me? Your column has really caught on, Patty. It gets ten times as much mail as all the other columns combined. Hey, that's great, isn't it? Tell me, are, are most of the reactions pretty favorable? Well, no one's a hundred percent right. You must be hitting a thousand. Uh, yeah, speaking of hitting, I want you to promise me you'll never tell anybody who Simon is. But why? I think you'd want everybody to know you're writing such a hot column, Patty. Uh, I wouldn't want a whole bunch of kids fawning over me. Hmm. Will you promise? If you say so. Simon says so. <laughs> George? May I speak with you a moment? George? Kathy? What's the matter with good old George? Nothing's the matter with good old George. Something's the matter with stupid old me. <laughs> what are you talking about? I thought you and George were buddy-buddy. Oh, we were getting along fine, Patty. Except that George only seemed to call me when he couldn't get another date. I wanted to make a real impression on him. So, I wrote to the Lovelorn columnist in our school paper asking his advice. Have you ever read that column, Simon Says? I've heard of it. Well, Simon advised me to make a date with George and stand him up. He said, give him the shock treatment. I did. Now George won't even speak to me. <laughs> oh, gee, Kath, I'm sorry. Oh, you're not nearly as sorry as Simon is going to be when I get hold of him. <laughs> Hello, Simon. Here's your mail. It's been piling up. <laughs> Meet Kathy, who's lit post everywhere. From Zanzibar to Barclay Square. But Patty's only seen the sights a girl can see from Brooklyn Heights. What a crazy pair. But they're cousins. Identical cousins all the way. Matching bookends, different as night and day. Where Kathy adores a minuet, the ballet russe, and crepe Suzette. Our Patty loves to rock and roll, a hot dog makes her lose control. What a wild duet! Still their cousins, identical cousins, and you find they laugh alike, they walk alike, at times they even talk alike. You can lose your mind when cousins are two of a kind. You haven't touched your breakfast, Kathy. I'm really not very hungry, Aunt Natalie. Is anything wrong? Nothing I won't get over. Would it help to talk about it? Some things are better left undiscussed. I don't mind talking about it. I just made a fool of myself. Oh, look, Kathy, you don't have to tell them about it if you don't want to. I'd probably feel better if I discussed it. I could kill him. Kill who? There's a new advice to the Lovelorn columnist on our school paper. He gave me some silly advice and I took it. Now George won't even talk to me. Oh, well, it's too bad. Who writes the column? Nobody knows. I've heard all kinds of rumors. It's supposed to be a teacher, a senior, a professional newspaper man. I hear he works miracles. Maybe he just didn't follow his advice properly. He told me to stand George up, and I stood him up. Well, that doesn't sound like very good advice to me. What's his full name? Simple Simon? <laughs> oh, look, there are ways and ways to stand a boy up. He should have done it without hurting George's...